Howdy and welcome to Fortress Comic News, episode 124. I am one of your hosts, Chris, alongside the newest member of Axe's Freshmen, Mike. I don't even use Axe. I'm a, I'm a, um, oh man, I can't even think of, think of it. The, uh, the red, the red, uh. Old Spice? Old Spice, yeah. I'm an Irish Springs man. Irish, man. You don't cross, you don't cross streams though. That You can't, you can't just mix products. I feel like everybody's got their own. Well, maybe, maybe the old, but the Irish Spring stuff is just soap, but more of a old spice. Maybe I'm just old. I never jumped on that X train with all the young kids. <laughs> well, it's not Irish really news, Spring. but you see the, um, well, you don't buy a whole lot of Marvel books, but there's a new uh, X superhero team called the Fresh Men. Are you serious? Yeah, that's their like ads. In the do they have, do they have names yet? Or like, uh, I don't think so. Do they have names for each one of them? Maybe no. as long as I mean, that's pretty awesome. I love I love when huh. I was gonna say as long as they do um, exactly like Burger King did back when I was a kid and um, make sure to have a handy capable gentleman in a wheelchair and call him Wheels because that's just funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> I don't know. I think they'll be a little more PC about it. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, you love to bring that up. The when they called kids the kid wheels, who was in fact in a wheelchair. I also just recorded a whole bunch of bad Bird friends King the other night, like, so I am all. We can like, say that shit about. Uh, but yeah, comics. I missed that. Yeah. Um. So we don't have an interview today. It's uh. You know, it's holiday season, July 4th, fireworks, beer, um, more fireworks, more beer. But, and with all that fireworks and beer, I got to see a couple of movies. Um, I saw Midsummer. Never heard of it. That, uh, that horror movie that came out. Um, I also saw Spider-Man before Chris saw it, so... I have a solid reason why I haven't seen Spider-Man. So really? I, I, I'm going, I'm taking the little one tomorrow to see it. So that's my reason. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'll let it slide, I guess. Um, then I won't give a spoiler filled review. I won't, we'll wait till you see it before we, we talk about it. Um, also stranger things came out this weekend. So much stuff to watch when it's like super nice. out. I can't believe they did this to us, but um, I'm actually halfway through that season, so I finished four episodes. Still finishing up season two. Um, yeah, this I mean, this season starts out strong. Um, I don't want to spoil anything yet because I haven't finished it. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Um, you know, Baskin Robbins is jumping on the Stranger Things train because one of the characters works at an ice cream shop with a flavor and it's like, Oh, now go to basket Robbins and get the, the number one flavor in wherever they are in Indiana. in that year, like we're bringing it back and it's like butterscotch flavor or something. It's like, nobody wants that. No, nobody oh, wants fuck. that. Indeed. That sounds like garbage, hot garbage. It's like, I guess, I know. I know. There's a reason they got rid of it in the eighties. Nobody wants it now. I think, um, but yeah, that's really good. And uh, we got some we got some TV stuff. Actually, the Mulan trailer just dropped for um, for movies, so I know you're really excited for Mulan. Um, I'm really excited for Mulan. No Mushu, we riot. You're so excited. <laughs> there is no Mushu, actually. Um, I heard they're gonna have a Phoenix character instead of the dragon. So there's already. <laughs> There's already some people upset about that. Um, I I guess I don't know that much about Mulan, but after watching the trailer, people are saying that it's like um, it's supposedly following uh, the original story, not the adaptation for the cartoon. I guess there is an original story that kind of deviates from the cartoon movie. But I mean, this looks awesome. It's like it's like if Disney did did a you know Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon movie. Um, 
I'll tell you right away in the trailer, they don't look like they want to hide Mulan at all. She's kind of just letting her hair down and she's kicking people's ass. So <laughs> I don't know how much of a secret it's going to be for her to be joining the army. We will find out. But I guess. Yeah. Um, Preacher season four trailer. Did you watch that? Yeah. It it was a trailer. What do you think? Uh, the apocalypse yeah. looks lit, yeah. yo. <laughs> um, it is sad that this is going to be the last season, but hopefully uh, we pick up pick up the boys at the end of July on Amazon Prime and we won't even have to think about it, you know? We'll yeah. be like, what preacher? I got the boys to watch now. I'm I'm excited for Preacher. I I love that series. I don't care what anyone says. It's really great. So it's sad, oh, yeah. but I, I'm glad it's going to end on its own terms at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Um, we talked about that before, but Sandman is officially coming to Netflix. Uh, Neil Gaiman is going to produce it, and Alan Heinberg is going to serve as the lead writer and showrunner. Um, and if you Google this man, Alan Heinberg... You'll see that he's a consulting producer on Grey's Anatomy. So, perfect, perfect so choice. So, this is going to be a hospital drama <laughs> with Sandman. Um, no, he has some, so he actually, he did something on Wonder Woman. Oh, he worked on the screenplay and story for Wonder Woman. Okay, yeah. so that's, <laughs> that's a pretty, I mean, Okay. I think he's qualified. Um, he also has some stuff he's written for TV, but oh, he wrote the Marvel Heroes uh, video game and Lego Marvel Avengers in 2016. So he's got some Marvel uh, Marvel um, experience as well. So, all right, well, I guess it's a good hands then. So we're getting. Uh, we talked about this, so I don't know how Sa- Sandman is going to translate to. Um, television screen i guess but yeah and i I did like name neil gaiman was saying that it's not going to be a time period piece it's going to be that story kind of rejiggered to make sense in today's world Uh, okay so because there's a lot of things uh, neither of us are huge sandman fans correct me if i'm wrong here i got the volume two that i that i just kind of forgot that i was reading it Okay, I read volume one. I thought it was okay, but uh, I've heard from people who are bigger fans said there's things in there that are like easily, like a lot of old literature, are easily solved with like a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> so they gotta exactly. they gotta like refigure that out. But um, this is something that Gaiman's been wanting to do forever. I mean, Sandman's his baby, so good. For oh him. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, he's he's got that other show on Amazon Prime right now. We talked about right good omens. Which I hear good things about. Yeah, so people are like, "Oh man, we can jump on this guy, take all his properties for movies and television." Here we go. Oh, and he's uh, had uh, American Gods out for a little yep. while too. So. Yeah, yep. So he's uh, they're they're slowly chipping away at all his works. Um, I think a lot of his stuff is too like trippy though to um to really bring to like a, a screen. I don't know. I don't know much about him, but I know that he writes a lot of, like, very, um, well, I mean, obviously, it's like Sandman. It messes with your head, almost. Yeah, um, yeah so that's pretty cool. We got the, uh, we I'd been talking about this the other day, if, if the, um, uh, why, I, it happens, like, once a month, I, once a month, I end up talking about the uh, Teen Titans cartoon that we watched growing up, um, and, like, how we have Teen Titans goes, Teen Titans go now, um, and we wish it was the original, but it's like people are always upset because like, you don't you like Teen Titans Go might be good now, but like people don't realize the Teen Titans we had before Teen Titans Go and how much more badass they were. Um, but now, uh, if you remember the reveal at the end of the Teen Titans Go to the movies, uh, the original Teen Titans show up and now we got the trailer for Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go where they're fighting each other. Uh, I think it looks like a lot of fun. I'll, I'll definitely be picking it up when it comes out. Yeah, and it's the it's funny because uh, it's the same voice cast in both shows. Yeah, it's weird because they're they're just like saying each other's lines and they're not changing their voice really. Yeah, so it, it does look a lot of fun. It's gonna be a straight to DVD thing, which is fine. Yep. It doesn't need to be a th- theatrical release, right? Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I like both shows, so yep, let's do it. 
Yeah, I think it's cool. And then you see like the interactions between the characters and themselves. And uh, it looks like at the end, they're bringing in like tons of multiverse heroes. I don't know if you saw that clip. Yeah. There's I was like, I almost wonder if they're going right. to do like a crisis of teen Titans. <laughs> I don't see why they wouldn't. It's, it's amazing. Um, we already see the two Trigons from both universes are teaming up. So um, I think it's going to be really cool. Okay, so I watched a couple movies. I watched Midsommar. Midsommar. Uh, it is by the director who did Hereditary, and I, you know, I talked, I talked very highly about Hereditary, and uh, how it was a good horror movie. Um, if you're expecting the same thing from Midsommar, don't go see Midsommar. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people, uh, and I'm probably gonna get some flack about this, but. A lot of people online are talking about how it's good and blah, blah, blah. But there's, um, it, it almost has the same. So if I can compare Midsummer to a movie, it'd be like the change from Get Out. Remember how hype Get Out was? And then Us came out and it was like mixed reviews. Yep. It's like the same thing happening where like Hereditary came out. Everybody, you know, praised it. And then we got Midsummer. It's almost like there was too much directive or director control on this because he kind of just went f- running free with all these weird ideas and a lot of it kind of missed the mark in the end. Um, it, the, I mean, the premise is these teens go to a like festival and um, I mean, it doesn't, it's like a cult really. It's not like a festival, but some weird stuff happens. There's some really like, there's some scenes that go on way too long that are just, they're not even like good or creepy to watch. It's just weird stuff. And then there's like, there's like scenes in the movie that they give you that are like, Oh, this is, this could be a really cool horror, but they never like touch on it ever again. Like, it's kind of just, if I had, I had to describe it, like if you're like doing a graph for hereditary and midsummer, like uh, hereditary is kind of like, okay, going along, going along. It's a normal movie. And then it's like, Oh shit. Everything starts getting crazier, crazier. And then you just are like, you're off the charts with crazy. There's a nice build up there for, for midsummer. It's kind of like, okay, weird, 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 all crazy. And then it kind of plateaus and it's just like another two and a half hours of like, meh, <laughs> you know, and it was like, I was waiting for that, that, that like scene that like, I don't know, escalates things or kind of just gets, but there was never like a resolve. There was kind of just like the same mundane, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure people are like, but you didn't see the artisticness and oh, I saw it. <laughs> um, so, so bad pacing. <laughs> yeah, bad, it was bad pacing, bad reference. I don't know. The cool part was they take shrooms and lay in the grass like they'd actually do in Midsummer Night's Dreams. <laughs> okay. That was um, Yeah, so, but let's talk about a movie I did love. And, um, I'm taking the words out of our friend Patrick's mouth, but he's happy that he can now officially say, and me as well, that um, I have my favorite Spider-Man movie out of all the Spider-Man movies. This is it. The Spider-Man Far From Home. And that's pretty much all I'll say, because I don't want you to go in with any expectations. But uh, I loved it. And you can take that for what it's worth, because I... Pretty sure I gave Batman versus Superman an 8 out of 10, so. (laughs) Well, everybody can, because I know I'm on the minority of this, but my expectations are fairly low because I didn't think that um, Homecoming was the amazing masterpiece that everyone else seemed to think it was, so. Yeah, I I actually like this more than Homecoming, for sure. I mean, I said it was my favorite, but um, this movie has heart, and it's probably the closest and this is from like the tone and the writing. It's probably the closest we'll ever get to the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, as far as like atmosphere, I guess. Well, yeah. kind of so, like the, so can't next, be fun. Ne- next week we'll go into like heavy spoilers yeah. on it, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward yep. to watching it. Yeah, it was good. Um, and then Stranger Things, I'm, I, like I said, I'm in the first four episodes. Crazy stuff is happening. Um, my problem with season two of Stranger Things was kind of like, it was like you just went in a whole circle again of like the same stuff happening. Whereas this is like, oh, stuff is happening and it's a little different than what we've seen before. So, um, did I talk about how I finished Dark season two? Did I talk about that yet? Yes. Okay. Well, 
even if I did talk about it, go watch Dark Season 2, you, you jerks, if you didn't go watch it yet. I didn't go or watch it. Night. <laughs> oh, damn it. That was mostly directed towards Chris. <laughs> did you watch anything? Have you seen anything lately? No, it's so it's Fourth of July week here in the right. Great Old US of A, and it is my busiest week of the year. Yeah, I figured. Um, I have been nonstop all week, but I have the next three days off, so I'm nice. Gonna... Good for you. Very but, uh, well, well, much deserved. Yeah, so I'll be trying to catch up on Stranger Things. I got some comics to organize. I'm gonna get stuff that Chris wants to get done. <laughs> Good, but I didn't get to watch a whole lot. I'm uh, even an episode behind the greatest television programming of all time. Holy moly! So, <laughs> oh boy, he said it. Can't be wrong. No, it's it's true. Like you disagree, you're wrong. I'm sorry. One out of one out of one critics agree. <laughs> <laughs> Best show on television. Um, all right. With that, we're gonna go to the comic book news. Uh, yeah, it's been. I mean, it's been a slow week for your. I mean, for me, for reading comics. I. Um, but comic news. We got another DC Black Label series announced. Uh, remember, it's the that's the DC Adult Swim book. Yes. Um, adults only, no kids allowed. It's called The Last God, a twelve issue series by Philip Kennedy Johnson, um, with art by Ricardo. Ricardo Federucci, Federucci, Federucci. I think it's Federucci. Federucci. All right. Um, whatever. It will be a dark high fantasy series. Hmm. Do you see the previews that were released for this, or the? I have not seen them. No. The art looks awesome. Really? Um, it. So, I know you're a fan of like the whole From Software video games. Right. Um, I am not, but. One of the things about Dark Souls I always loved was the art direction. I thought the art in those games was just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It reminds me a little bit of that. Perfect. Like that I'm very in. Very dark, uh, like hellish fantasy. And um, I'm actually really excited for this. I think it looks really cool. And after the news from the last episode about um, Vertigo being shut down, it seems like all those books are now just kind of migrating over to do um this and they're gonna be <clears throat> dc black label books as we'll continue on with the next story and find out but yeah so we're getting like creator own stuff in black label now and this is like the first official one announced now this one that all right, is everybody holding on to their pants because it's, it's gonna blow you away um joe hill's getting his own label within dc black label labels oh no my labels. pants <laughs> where did my pants go um a label within a label well i heard you like labels kids <laughs> you got a label for your label um and it's called hill house comics it's going to be a series of horror-based comics and i'm, I'm immediately i've already sent my wa- wallet down the street via, via uh carrier pigeon it's heading to san fran as we speak to just drop my money off at DC's doorstep because this is awesome. This is awesome. This is how you do now, you know, it was kind of kind of funny they're getting a label and then a label, but this is how you do a label and then a label, right? Start off yeah. with Joe Hill. But uh, yeah, and like Jinx World and Kill yeah. Killing Floor and it, yeah, DC likes its labels all of a sudden. But um what I haven't read Lock and Key yet. It's one of those books that's like on the list of I want to try this book out because everyone talks about it. But I kind of hope this means that Joe Hill's in the door at DC and he's going to like take a stab at Constantine or Swamp Thing or something. Yes. Because we we deserve a great Swamp Thing and a great Constantine book again. It's been a while. I mean, New 52, Scott yeah. Snyder was a good run, mm-hmm. but it wasn't a great run. Right. So I I'm think, hoping that's what this is uh, going to lead to. Yeah, and I mean, that's got me even more excited. Um, I think this is great. And, uh, you know, this is probably one more thing they're going to have over over Marvel within the comics is this imprint thing is really working out for them. I mean, well, I mean, it's starting to, right? The, um, the Damned and... Uh, 
What was the What was the other book? There's uh, Dan Superman Year One. Superman Year One. That's what and I was like. And Batman yeah. Last Night. And last night, yeah, like those those are great. They probably sold a lot of issues of those. And they're like, we could do something here. Um, and I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure that was all part of their plan. Put the big three popular books up front, and now we can get things rolling. Um, which leads me to the next story. <laughs> we have uh, we have DC's number three came out this week, and I think with the popularity of that. <laughs> Marvel's like, hey, we can do this again. Uh, Marvel announced the return of Marvel Zombies in October. Thoughts? <laughs> I, I love Marvel Zombies. Yeah, yeah, um, you like it. What's funny about this to me is this news came out the day that Kirkman announced that the issue of Walking Dead from this week is the last issue. So Kirkman makes that announcement. There's no more Walking Dead. This is the last issue. This is what we've been leading to. And then Marvel comes out and goes, We got a zombie book coming. <laughs> we've been waiting. They've like they have the emergency button, like if Kirkman drops Walking Dead, they just punch <laughs> it. It's like announcement made. But it's just funny because Kirkman's the one that kind of created the Marvel Zombies universe. Like he did the first couple trades. Right. So it it was a funny little thing, but I'm excited. I like Marvel Zombies. Marvel Zombies has been okay the last like three or four series they've done. Mm-hmm. Um, the the first three are really great, and then the Marvel Zombies versus uh, Army of Darkness is a lot of fun. Oh yeah! But after that, it it dips in quality. Um, although they are still enjoyable, so I hope they kind of find somebody to take it over and do a really good job. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to check it out. It's Marvel zombies. I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess we'll talk about speaking of the end of walking dead. I guess we could get into what we read this week, right? Yeah. And you're not reading walking dead anymore. Correct? No, I stopped after that. I think it was right around where like Carl was getting laid. Stuff like that. I kind of was like, I don't, (laughs) I'm not, so I'll just start with this. Um, now, Walking Dead was the. This is the book that kind of reinvigorated me into becoming a comics fan again. I read yep. it when I was younger, faded away, and blah blah. So Walking Save Dead's me. an important series for me. Um, I thought the way Kirkman handled this, I really liked. Uh, he's you know been trying really hard to bring back kind of surprise to the comics world and i mean we're not helping but you know everything is solicited and everything is talked about ahead of time and he actually Mm -hmm. solicited the next couple issues and then after this came out immediately canceled them (laughs) that's awesome as kind of a ploy so i liked it and his little thing in the back was kind of like almost heart-wrenching where he's talking about ending it and i like that they actually had a conversation about extending the series Mm-hmm. And he kind of came to the conclusion that, like, no, it, like, this is where it needs to end. It needs, I need to finish it here. My story is done. Good for him. So that being said, the last issue, ninety two, was where uh, Rick died. We talked about it, and right. um, Carl has to kill the zombie Rick. So in this issue, we get a a time jump. So Carl is Rick's age now, and we're. We're in a settlement that's much more civilized. No roamers around. um, And there's very plain laws and regulations. And people aren't living behind walls and all this stuff. I really enjoyed it because it was Carl kind of paying homage to his father Mm -hmm. uh, through his actions. Hmm. And showing like where all these characters are, and I'm, I'm guessing it's like a 20 year time jump. Um, like Michonne is the high judge of the area. Uh, Maggie is the, the quote unquote president now. She took hmm. over. Cool. Um, and it was it was really good, and it ended in a really cool way where it was Carl sitting there with his daughter, and he's telling a story about the great man who helped build back bring back civilization his father. So That's cool. it was a really great wrap up. Um, I'm sad to see walking dead go. Although the last couple of story arcs haven't been the best, it's still been really enjoyable for me. 
And uh, like I said, this has been a staple in my comics life since I got back into comics. So mm-hmm. we'll see. San Diego Comic Con's right around the corner. I'm sure Kirkman has something up his sleeve for us. So we'll see. Yeah, something's going to be announced. Um, I like how he did that, though, because like the end of Invincible, I mean, they were teasing that for 12 issues. Yeah, and yeah, we got the whole year. Like, this is the countdown. I'm I'm giving the Invincible thing made sense because Invincible was always kind of a him kind of picking at superhero comics. Right. It was from day one, so the countdown to the last issue made sense because that that's what Marvel or DC would do. Mm-hmm. Um, I like what he's been doing recently. He did it with Die Die Die, and then with this, where he's like he's not soliciting it ahead of time. He's not really letting people know what's going on. Um, It was even came out that image took a financial hit on the last issue because he solicited it as uh, a normal 22 page comic at three ninety nine. Well, when they basically what they did is they folded in the last three issues into one released it as a square bound, like 72 or something page. Uh issue, And then, but had to keep it at the same price because of their um, rules through Diamond. So mm-hmm. they actually took a hit selling it this way. But it was all in the name of, like, we want to do something to surprise people and really give them something to look f- Like, not even something to look forward to, but something to be shocked about when they get to the comic shop. Mm-hmm. And uh, I give them credit for doing these kinds of things. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so what would you read? I re- I've been – I'm catching up on – uh, I think you talked about this already, but um, Superman, the Chinese Superman, um, Keenan Kong, and I think I'm on like issue seven or eight where he's. Uh, it's cool. You get you get to like see the Justice League of China and the Freedom Fighters stuff like that. They're really cool stories, um, all based on like the whole struggle for democracy in China. So it's kind of very relevant to today, I guess. Um, I mean, the book came out, this book came out probably a year or two ago. So yeah, it's a really cool story. Uh, it's a nice play on each of the characters. Um, you're like, what, there's a Wonder Woman, there's a Batman. Um, but I also read, uh, is it Justice League? Was it 20? 20... 27. 27. Um, that was an awesome issue. Uh, where do I begin? They go visit the, the monitor, right? Um, the World Forger and the Justice League. Well, I guess we'll start with John Johns. He's the be- I think he's the beginning issue, right? Yeah. So John Johns, we know he thinks he Martian Manhunter thinks he found Lex Luthor. That Lex Luthor's still alive. Um, he well, goes. It was revealed last issue that he yeah. found Lionel Luthor. Right. He found Lionel Luthor, Lex Luthor's dad. We think so. The, this issue starts off with. Um, he's doing a bunch of tests on Martian Manhunter and he thinks he's like trying to help him some way. Um, and I think Martian Manhunter kind of finally realizes these tests are like, so he can steal his data almost, or like steal his DNA and figure out like what he's made of, what, what really drives him. Cause, um, Lionel Luther sees him as like an apex predator. Like he's the perfect anatomy to be like a killing machine. Um, Come to find out, Lionel Luther isn't Lionel Luther. He's a robot. And uh, Dr. Uh, what do they call it? Is it Evo or Ivo? Because I think they've used both. I always say Ivo. I always say Ivo as well. Okay. Um, Dr. Ivo is behind it, and he's ugly as hell. Um, and then, I mean, you can't have Ivo without... Um, Amazo. Amazo. And there's... and But we, we, we kind of find out, like... You know, there's a fight with Amazo and stuff. We find out that Amazo is just a, he's just flawed. He's just flawed. That's why Ivo is like, oh man, I need the perfect specimen to make my new robots. So um, there's a fight with him and Hawk, Hawk Girl shows up. Um, and I was thinking like, you know, he, he makes these Amazos to like counter every hero almost. Um, how do you counter Hawk Girl? All she has is a mace. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she smashes things with, with a mace. So it's like... It, it kind of makes sense. She's the one to help him like break all these robots. But it's like, how do you counter? Like, what's the what's the superhero counter for that? You can uh, make her make them out of nth metal. Yeah, I guess. You're right. 
Um, yeah, so that was, that, that's uh, half of it. While the Justice League goes with the uh, World Forger to go find the Monitor, and they're like, hey, dude, and Monitor's like, oh, man, I've been trying to create a new multiverse because this one's pretty much screwed. And they're like, no, you idiot. You don't need to create a new one. He's like, oh, gee, oh, shucks. Game's over. We're done for. And they're like, why don't you just help us save this one? And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I guess. I guess I could team up with you guys. So now they have to go find Anti-Monitor, um, which I'm sure he's not going to be as easy to convince. No, it's going to be interesting. So I don't know how they're going to convince him. Like, they tell the Anti-Monitor, dude, there's nothing for you to destroy if there's nothing at all. So maybe you should come help us save it. So there's something and then something for you to destroy and take away. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to convince him. Um, but then uh, at the end, we find out, um, we go back to Martian Manhunter. We find that Lex Luthor's still alive. So I, <laughs> I feel Ooh. like it's going to be Superman going to Annie Monitor and be like, yo, like you should come help us. Like, no, I don't like you guys. It's like, yo, your mom told me that you wet your bed. It's like, what the fuck did she say? <laughs> She's dead. Yeah, yeah. it seems they they've all joined forces in a mutual hate for their mother, Perpetua. So, um, I guess we'll see how that goes with Anti Monitor. So I like the issue. My only um, dislike with it is I really like Amazo, mm-hmm. and when Amazo popped up, I was really happy. And then when they kind of yeah. nerfed Amazo in this, I was like, oh. Yeah, that was that was kind of sad to see. Um, but you got to think that like. The Justice League's been fighting Amazo since the '80s, so they like it's it's a one trick pony, really. If he just counters the Justice League, like all you have to do is fight the one that doesn't counter your hero, basically. I don't know, but um, yeah, but it's same with uh, the Crime Syndicate. Like they've been fighting the Crime Syndicate forever, but I true. love when the Crime Syndicate. Shows yeah, up, yeah, so. you're right. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, I, I still liked it though. I think um, I think we're settled in now to where I uh, I'm. Like, this is a Justice League book, you know what I mean? I, we had some, towards the first few issues there, we had some qualms about it, um, but I think this is it. I feel like, because Snyder had said that Dark Knight's Metal was a kind of a crisis book, mm-hmm. um, but I feel like even more, they're heading towards a crisis-like event. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. Once again, San Diego Comic-Con's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. I think we have some big announcements coming. I mean, we obviously have who's going to be taking over Batman. I think we're going to do an event book for next like spring, and it's going to be Justice League Batman related um, with this storyline. I'm super excited for it. But yeah, I, I mean, like you can't story. you can't save the multiverse without a crisis event. Come on. Yeah, and they also in this book mention all the they mention Crisis and Infinite and Final Crisis. So. Mm-hmm. It, it was, yeah, it was a really good issue. I liked it. Yeah. Um, I had kick ass. I, I'm behind. I haven't read kick ass and I haven't read green lantern number one, uh, nine, but I'll, what the, the other, the last book I read this week, um, was Superman up in the sky. Number one of four by Tom King. I read that as well. I liked it. Did you like it? Yeah. So I almost didn't like it. I'll tell you why I almost didn't like it <laughs> because I thought, when Superman goes to like uh, read all the Zeta Beam history, <laughs> that we're going to be stuck in Superman's mind for the re- ne- next three issues, like like Tom King has been doing with Batman that I've complained about on every episode. <laughs> it was this close for me to like. I almost like I I almost like screamed out loud and pounded my fists on the table. Um, but up in the sky, I think is good. It it starts off with like Batman needs help with a a kidnapped girl Um, come to find out that her kidnapper was Superman like and uses Zeta beam to to, uh, leave earth. And so Superman has to go find out like the his like, and this makes sense too. the Zeta beams are occurring all are basically occurring all the time. So you can't really trace them. Uh, Superman gives up his mind to the like Zeta beam archive. This is all very comic book shit. Um, Mm -hmm. but, But the, uh, he gives up his mind. The guy says, you're going to go crazy. And then we see like a, <sighs> and this is why I hate when Tom King does this because like, he doesn't put like earlier, he doesn't put like 
elsewhere or like in Superman's mind, he just like starts throwing scenes at you and you're like, okay, well, these are all happening across different timelines. So this has got to be like Superman in his head. Um, and it is. So he finds out where the girl is and he's going to go try to save her off world. But there's this big, big issue with him leaving the world. Like he, he has a struggle of like, well, if I, if I leave earth, people die. If I don't leave earth, people out in the, out in the universe die too. So he's like, no matter where I am, someone dies. I can't be everywhere all the time. But uh, I think it was a solid first issue. Yeah. Oh. So an- anyone that doesn't know, this was uh, the reprint of the Walmart exclusive Tom King Superman. Right. So yeah, I it, yeah. like I said, it was really good. Like you said, um, the yeah, the stuff where we're in his mind, I got confused and I had to go back. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes. I see what he did there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I think he has a decent grip of Superman. Um, I still, I think it kind of, it pales a little bit because I think that Bendis has a better grip of Superman and I'm enjoying that book way more. But I do want to see where this book is going. Um, and it's funny because next week we're getting the Bendis Batman book, which is the same thing, the reprints. So we're just mm-hmm. getting kind of a flip of those two to see how they can treat each other's each other's characters, which is great for me because I didn't go to Walmart to buy these. Neither did I. Hell yeah! All right, so what did you read? Okay, so I'm gonna go through a few um, in depth, and then I'm gonna speed through the rest. First, um, review early review. Go to your comic shops Wednesday and pick up Second Coming. I got to read it. Um, oh boy. I really liked it. Uh, the first like six pages is Mark Russell retelling the Bible <laughs> the Mark Russell way, and it's fantastic. Um, That's amazing. There's even a scene where uh, after Eve eats the fruit from the tree, uh-huh. and he goes, like, you did an evil thing. How could you? And Eve's like, well, if this is the fruit of knowledge and it has the knowledge of good and evil like how would i know i'm doing evil before i ate it (laughs) it was yeah so there's oh man there's a lot of great moments like that um it gets a little weak once we leave that and get kind of the backstory of who sunburst is because it's just superman right so i didn't think he needed to spend as much time as that but once we end that and go back into what's up with Jesus. It gets really great again. So God comes to some person and is like, listen, my kid, like he's, he's sheltered. He's a little like spoiled. Like, can you help me out here? Like man to man. It's like, okay. And then it's all just some bursts going out in Superman, like uh, events and Jesus fucking it up because he wants to do like, what's quote unquote right. Right. Um, but I really recommend this book. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I look forward to more of it. Awesome. No one left to fight. This is a dark horse book. Mm -hmm. It is essentially the idea is, uh, what if after the cell saga and DBZ Goku, that was the last fight. Goku had nobody else. There's nowhere else to go. Yep. Um, I really like this book. It's uh, the the story basically is, and I'm going to use DBZ terms, even though the book is its own characters. But it's Goku goes to Vegeta's house and is like, and convinces Bulma like we should go to the crater where I fought this guy, and kind of just look back at what happened and have like a memoriam. Vegeta's jealous as shit and is like we should spar in the back. Because his kids always want to play as Goku instead <laughs> of him. Um, it's very anime-y. It's very colorful. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And I, I really want to read more of it. I think it's really good. If you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, I think you'll find something you like in here. Yeah, it's on my list. I just haven't gotten to it. Um, Deceased number three. Uh, the big thing here is they do like a, a typical zombie trope. But they do it with Superman. So Superman uh, realizes he has to go back to Smallville and get Ma and Pa. Pa has been infected. Uh, so he has to kill Pa. Damn it. And, uh, so it was kind of a, a tearjerker moment, but it is a 
very much a zombie trope that we've seen a hundred times over. What I really liked in here was there's a moment between Harley and Ivy where Ivy is just like, it's that whole thing of you need to go to Joker and just finish this. Like it, it can't go on anymore. And she goes to Joker, finds out he's turned. So she starts running away and then she realizes, wait, turns around, shoots him. And goes, wow, that felt f- amazing. Like, <laughs> finally, I'm done with this fucker. Yeah. Um, good issue. Uh, like I said, a lot of zombie tropes in it, but I did enjoy it. Um, bu- 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 bu. I'm going to end with that. Star Wars target Vader. Rebels hire a bunch of bounty hunters to kill Vader. It's awesome. Check it out. <laughs> um, the main character is a lot of fun. He's like a half cyborg human who is a disgraced bounty hunter, but he's like one of the best of the galaxy. And, uh, it just, it, it was just a ton of fun. Like the, the whole premise is ridiculous and I love it. And it's star Wars. So I'm reading it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Every book. Um, I'm going to end on war of the realms, but we're going to go through uh, black hammer age of doom. Number 11, really good. And we're getting to the end of the story. Um, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge number three, once again, really good. Brings in the character from Rebels, and uh, the next issue is going to be about Dr. Aphra, which I love. Savage Avengers number three, also really good. Conan has a sword made of venom, and it's fantastic. That's amazing. Uh, Star Wars Age of the Resistance number one, Finn. This is really good because it's Finn before he turns, so he's still a stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. And it's him, like, mopping up shit <laughs> and being that stormtrooper. Uh, it's a, it was a really fun story. I like these one-shots. They're great story pieces. Yeah. Character pieces. Mighty Mascots number two. Oh, yeah. Really good. Friend of the show. The book costs you a buck fifty. Go pick it up. Pick it up. What are you doing? War of the Realms number six. The final issue of War of the Realms. Spoiler alert galore. The good guys win. Um, What? So this is actually a very satisfying ending for an event book. One of the better ones in recent memory. Um, Thor gets his hammer. So Thor is in... He's in the world tree, which is inside the sun. He has to give up his eye to gain knowledge of how to destroy Malkith. Mm -hmm. And... Malkith is shielded by this uh, force field that will only let Thor through. So Thor's idea is, well, if one Thor is good, four Thors is better. (laughs) He sends Fantastic Four through time to grab Thors, and they kill Malkith together. It's amazing. Um, Thor becomes worthy again. He gets Mjolnir back and gains the power, and that's how he ends up uh, destroying Malkith. And he is also given the title of um, All-Father in this issue as well. Nice. So this was a great wrap-up to everything that happened. A lot of good fights, a lot of punchy-punchy. Um, War of the Realms was a really good kind of end cap to Jason Aaron's run. I know he has like four or five more issues to go, but um, I really think this was as good as it needed to be to kind of wrap up everything he's been working on for the past what eight nine years now yeah it's been a little while um, yeah so i really love this book speaking of really loving things mike where can people find you on the internet oh if they love the show and me uh, fortress ricker on twitter what about you chris why they could find me at fortress chris on twitter wow. or they could find us at fortress where everything we do is right there on that handy dandy website you guys all know the spiel like, share, subscribe on the YouTubes, comment, all that. Uh, go to your podcatcher, whether it's the fancy new Apple podcast or Stitcher or whatever. Give us a five-star review. Helps out a lot. Patreon.com slash Forge Comic News. Go there. Be awesome. And, uh, yeah, do all that stuff. Five stars, please. Five stars. And send Mike uh, stuff in the mail, like um, glitter and no. dog poop. And nope. um, anything else that's just super annoying. I'll be uh, giving his uh, full address on my Twitter 
uh, 5 p.m. Tuesday, uh, July 9th. So look forward to that. And send. No, I'm not doing any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I was like, when did this happen? Holy <laughs> shit. I was like, I guess I'll just go with it. I don't know. But seriously, if you see him in the streets, just like throw glitter in his face. Just do it. Wouldn't be the first time. We'll see y'all guys next week. See ya. Boom.